Good afternoon. Um, here at the panel Theatre in Crisis. Um, my name is Matthias Pes. I'm the moderator of this panel. I'm uh, working in a, a German theatre performing arts production house in Frankfurt called <coughs> Künstlerhaus Musanto. Um, and um, I have worked in different um, uh, contexts um, of performing arts uh, and in different countries in the last years. And I uh, approached this question and I made experiences with this question uh, or the topic of this panel in, in three different uh, um, areas or, or um, I think very different topics which we could all discuss here today um, and I, I just doubting that we will manage to do this. Um, for sure there is, um, when we discuss about theatre in crisis, there is uh, the question of working conditions of artists, of uh, the uh, institutional situation, of uh, the spaces in which we work or don't work, um, uh, the, uh, the working conditions in terms of our uh, social situation as artists and our, uh, uh, uh, uh, our own income as well as uh, the means we have for productions. Um, this is uh, uh, one of the topics. The other one um, which uh, I and many of us approached uh, in the last year a lot um, and which we also approached here in some of the uh, uh, presentations we heard in the last uh, today and yesterday and which we still will hear tomorrow from others um, is the question of um, how artistic practices, um, how um, art can be um, used in political activ uh, activism. Um, the so-called artivism has, uh, has been mentioned uh, uh, within uh, the last uh, uh, months and, and the last two years several times. There have been held also, uh, like here in uh, Munich, uh, several conferences, um, different festival activities that try to subsidize a little bit the activities that have been done by artists, creative practices um, for non-violent uh, protests. Um, this is a second topic very uh, um, um, present uh, in the debate. And the third one, um, which is an approach uh, more um, as, a, as a dramaturg or programmer or curator, um, what uh, when uh, the art is used in um, political activism is then uh, afterwards left over um, from, from the art itself. Um, it is a quite, uh, perhaps, uh, a not very necessary question at the moment, but it's a question which uh, in the practice of creating these kind of events arises very often. Um, um, what, uh, um, if the artists are on the street, what would put of them then in the museums or in the festivals or in the theatres? Um, I don't know whether we will get to this question today. Um, we would like to start um, actually with a presentation of different activities of artists uh, uh, from different parts of Europe um, and uh, these artists which are sitting here around me and which I will present to you now uh, will themselves then uh, present uh, their uh, situation and uh, their activity and um, well do you want me to present you first all the names? No, they're all standing here. Um, um, so we start directly with uh, uh, um, Marta uh, Gilmore and Mauro Milone. Where, here they are. Hello. They are from uh, Teatro Valle Occupato in uh, Rome, um, a theater uh, that has been a very famous old theater in Rome that has been occupied in, I think, 2011. Um, in the framework of... of uh, uh, yeah, the idea of not commonizing, of not privatizing the water supply of the city, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I, I would first uh, will, uh, will say that I'm an actor, and uh, after I've been in the Teatro Valle Occupado, I've been an activist because in uh, all my life I, uh, I, I did I did my art artwork, and then uh, I discovered this. Uh, this, this, other, uh, this other thing that is activism, because the um, Teatro Valle Occupato uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, exactly, it's a theater that um, risked a privatization um, made it by not, not only uh, private, uh, um, private spaces but also by, made by public. Because uh, um, this is, I mean, the, the, the context. Uh, in 2011, 
uh, we uh, Italian people, Italian citizens have, uh, have won a referendum against uh, the privatization of water and the um, nuclear situation. And uh, after, uh, the, the day after, uh, a group of uh, theater makers decide to enter in this old uh, old theater. It's the oldest theater in Rome. It, uh, it, it's the beautiful theater of Rome uh, against uh, privatization. Uh, because um, and this is this is a fact. This is a fact. We uh, before the occupation. Uh, we uh, we weren't uh, a group of uh, artists. We uh, we were uh, single per single artists, uh, single musicians, musicians, directors, uh, technicians. That uh, in after the occupation we became a subjectivity. Before this occupation we were lonely. We were nous sommes la solitude. As we as we said, because uh, um, and then and then the, the occupation it, it was uh, first a, a, like a joke. It was a, a three days of occupation, and see uh, because we said okay, we cannot stand uh, anymore. See um, public theater, a beautiful theater like this, uh, uh, being privatized. So we entered with our bodies and say no more, no more. And it, the, um, the reply, the, the reply of uh, artists and uh, citizenship was so huge that we decided, okay, uh, maybe we move something uh, really, really strong in uh, Italian culture, in uh, Italian public thinking of culture that we say okay maybe we can uh, take uh, our time to rethink rethink uh, a new model of uh, thinking culture and then uh, after uh, one month two months uh, we we have a very beautiful discussion with the Ugo Mattei that is uh, here in uh, here in the, in, the, in the stage in the audience and and we said maybe uh, we can do a, a new a new conception of uh, uh, make these things uh, uh, together. So why why don't why don't think uh, a foundation a new kind of foundation? Uh, because a foundation uh, in, in the Italian way it, it seems like scary. Oh, a foundation! It's something very uh, private. It's very um, uh, come si dice? Um, una condizione è something posh, something posh. a lot of money. Exactly. And now, uh, so we think, uh, no, we can build a new, a new type of foundation, a foundation based on participation, a new foundation based on commons, on common goods. That in Italy is a third category. Uh, out of the uh, legislazione because we have only uh, public uh, and, and private so the common goods is a, a new kind it's a new model to rethink uh, managing things from uh, above and, uh, and now the, we are still in occupation after two years and, and now we, uh, we presented this foundation, the Teatro Valle Bene Comune uh, Foundation, and to uh, mm, and performing commons with the practical of commoning. You want, you want to add something? Uh, <laughs> well, the process to arrive to the foundation was an open and participative process. Uh, there were months in which the statutes of the foundation were put online and anyone could contribute to it by uh, amending it, or proposing an amendment anyway, and uh, there were assemblies, and so the community was actually called to participate to the creation of this uh, subject, which 
mm, was probably our way to try and um, build uh, uh, an interactive, healthy uh, relationship between a struggle and um, and and law and and people's rights as they are written in in the law. So th that that that is the experiment. It's, it is obviously huge and delicate and fragile and and since it, it, it deals also with such a fragile process as, as arts in, in a fragile context as ours then uh, it is put into continuously put into question and into crisis itself and this is why <laughs> it is hard but also I think challenging for us on many aspects as artists and as, as people <laughs> as I mean, well. it's also not only a, a huge symbol which uh, gained uh, as a model uh, of, as, as you said for a common good uh, that culture could be or that a, a cultural place could be uh, uh, gained a lot of uh, uh, support also from very famous people but um, as I understand it it is uh, something that is really very like an, a, the every day in this theater is like full of uh, artistic events it's a, it's a self-made program a self pro theater how does that work? Yes, um, will you continue or uh, we can talk? Uh, yes, every, we, we, we think, oh, I mean, there is a little bit introduction that we have to do because uh, maybe in Italy, um, it, it may be different the, the system in, for other countries. I don't know in, if in Germany uh, th there is some theaters open 24 hours a day that be uh, a, a social and a public spaces. I don't know. Because in Italy <coughs> we have the, the, the, the most important theaters like the Valle, like the institutional uh, theaters open, they, they open at uh, 6 p.m. Um, they do tickets, the show uh, goes on stage and then Every, everyone go home. So we decided no, this is this is, this, this couldn't be possible. We we wanna we wanna we wanna think a place where uh, artists and citizens mix it up. And so, for example, uh, the, the Teatro Valle is open uh, 24 hours a day, and uh, we do uh, not only theater shows but only cinema or music and Commons Cafe that it means uh, that we think uh, that place a theater like an Agora where uh, in, um, talking about uh, themes, talking about uh, uh, problems uh, or maybe issues that we decide. There is a collective because uh, I, I think we can, uh, we can name us a, as a collective uh, or maybe it's it's best the, the best uh, name is comunità uh, a community a community for our artists as as I said before uh, we never uh, know before before the, the occupation each, each other and but one of the most important thing at the, the assembly all the assemblies are always open are always open to citizens are always open to other artists. Uh, we are not, uh, we are not uh, closed. We are very open. And for example, this year we decided to uh, build um, a, a programmation, a theater programmation, with uh, artists, with the theater companies, in a sort uh, as a, like a, a co cogestion, a no co gestione, co management between. Us, so artists of um, Teatro Valle Occupato and uh, theater companies and uh, musicians uh, to, to build uh, a new way of interaction. Because for us, the most important, I don't know, one of the most important things is that uh, we change uh, between ec economical, uh, economical, um, Economical um, in relations, in, in social relations. For us, the most important thing is uh, happiness, is to, to live a beautiful life. And so, uh, we uh, in, in the assembly, 
uh, we, we do we do assembly um, with uh, a, a little bit um, of of human that uh, in in the other uh, public spaces uh, there is there is no more this uh, human feelings I don't I know I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yes. We. Uh... Oh, maybe maybe. It, one, one thing, another thing that, that uh, we we do not earn anything. It's it's like in a in a normal context, this is uh, like a volunteering uh, state. But uh, we do not uh, name us as a volunteers because uh, we do uh, we do a struggle. So we do, we are, we are there uh, for uh, a process that is uh, biggest than us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Gigi Agriopoulou and Hipatia Volumis um, from Ambrose Theatre in Athens. Um, uh, you uh, do something that sounds a little similar but also is quite different. Um, a, a reactivation of an old space also in the center of Athens is what you have done. Uh, another occupation of a theatre space. Uh, but uh, it sounds also, um, uh, as we hear the latest news from you, uh, much more violent and difficult uh, in the process you are. Please tell us a little bit about it. Uh, yeah. uh, just to say that um, myself and Patia will kind of speak from a different perspective. Uh, and um, that uh, myself and uh, Anestis, who is also part of this uh, uh, event, but I present a performance later, were part of the initial collective that uh, made this reactivation. Um, and uh, Ipatia was one of the participants during that time, so she's going to speak from her own perspective as participating and really instrumental in, in it during those days. Uh, but um, Ambrose is also now, it's, it's constantly in process and its modes of organization constantly opens to more people. So. I'll try to describe the first period and then try to say a little bit about where, where are we now. Um, Ambrose uh, Theatre was a disused building in the centre of Athens. Uh, it, was, um, uh, it was left deserted, deserted till, till, uh, from, since 2007. And uh, in 11 of November 2011, Maville Collective, the group of uh, theatre makers and performance makers, uh, occupied it. Um, and um, in this occupancy installed itself as, uh, as a reactivation, that's how we called it. Uh, and the reason we called uh, reactivation was we, because at the moment we kind of thought that we just don't want only to occupy the space, but also to reactivate, to actually raise questions about what theatre could do today and what we could do, how our practice can continue. And, and it, that was in 2011, and that was the beginning of the crisis somehow in Greece which of course you know, has <laughs> deepened since then. So uh, uh, what we, we thought was we'll kind of propose a program of 12 days and that would be um, a kind of cultural proposal from our kind of <laughs> view. So we devised a very intense uh, program of reactivation, as we called it, which was kind of every day, from the moment you occupy the space from the next morning, very early in the morning till very late in the evening, uh, and we have loads of different activities that uh, um, that for us kind of responded to to the crisis, to what was happening at that moment, but also to the precarious cultural landscape of Greece over the last 10 years, how we have experienced it. Because of course, it was not only the crisis, it was a crisis that happened, happened after a certain situation. Um, in this program, over 300 people participated um, and, and presented work, and there were artists, theoreticians, architects, all sorts of different fields. Um, mm, uh, mm. And uh, it was really important for us to actually uh, think of what this space is going to do in the city. So there are many theaters in Athens. So we didn't want to actually make another space just for presenting performances. So actually start thinking together, and um, we reinvent categories. And, uh, Art, forms of artistic practice. So in that sense, we said, okay, we won't have in evening performances, but we will have own goals. So own goal is a sense of putting a goal to yourself, putting a challenge to yourself. So we had like 20 minutes on goals that were experimental, <coughs> hybrid. It was a challenge to, for artists of to all sorts of different fields. 
So during during those twelve days, um, there were like uh, the space was constantly activated with many different actions and. Um, different groups occupied the space with uh, their own kind of uh, activities. Um, what happened during the time is that Ambrose um, resisted very much um, um, exclusion, uh, the exclu uh, resisted categorization. So in some ways, during that time, we did, we, um, during those 12 days, uh, in artists, um, uh, professors, um, students, uh, marginal communities just presented work the one next to each other with no categorization, with <laughs> no listings. So somehow Ambrose during that time brought together a whole generation of performance makers but on the other hand diverse groups of the city that they were all kind of p presenting one next to each other. So it became a very unexpected space because that mixed also the audiences. So it was, you didn't know what to expect and Though people were coming up with their own kind of also ideas that were actually hosting the space. So it was actually very structured, but also other activities came up. A group of students, for example, proposed to reactivate uh, not only the theater, because the theater was reactivated, but to reactivate the print house, because Ambrose, before becoming a theater in the 90s, was a print house. So they decided to reactivate it, the print house of Ambrose. So what they did is they set up a small, uh, um, um, a small kind of establishment there and uh, every day they printed one fanzine, one small magazine that was actually documenting the activities that were happening uh, during the space. Um, though, um, um, so uh, yeah, the promise was that uh, after we, we, when we actually occupied the space we didn't have a plan to continue uh, for two years almost as it is now. We, uh, there was a promise that the last day of the occupation we will open to an open assembly, unless this is here <laughs> later. Uh, and uh, then uh, um, from that um, we will decide together of what's going to happen. I won't go into all the details, so Ipatia can also discuss about what happened later, but I'll say that its mode of organization changed many times, so at the moment it operates with a large um, a weekly assembly, so it's really open to everyone, uh, that we had loads of problems many times with the police, because of course the situation in Greece during, the, during those years changed a lot, uh, so the space had been closed many times with the police and then reopened again by the people there, and uh, uh, recently uh, has been even more intense, and um, um, different companies that are responsible to sell national assets and uh, have kind of tried to privatize the space. Many actually recently, uh, Embrose was closed with bars and then reopened again, but also two actors were arrested while they were uh, rehearsing and sent into uh, court. Um, so, yeah, you know, the Embrose continues through those two years, but I have to say that it has been, there were moments that it was really, truly really wonderful and really questioning artistic practice, but it was also, as for me personally, an extremely difficult uh, process from kind of trying to find ways in between very many different kind of concrete places of all sorts, of, from kind of the state, from other alternative ways, for all sorts of different structured ways. Okay. Yes, uh, just very briefly. Um, I was invited, um, Gigi and Anesti was here. He, Anesti actually should be here with you. Um, the original occupiers of Ambros, the Mavili Collective, um, when they set up this 12 day program, um, they had invited me from before to uh, take part uh, in. I'm a, I'm a performance studies scholar, so they had asked me to give some seminars. Uh, at the space. So I can speak from uh, the experience of a participant in, in the first um, uh, few days of the occupation and how, of course, uh, being part of that, uh, that moment in Athens uh, became um, for me so much more. And, and, and it's, I'm not, I mean, I'm, it's not just for me, it's for all of you, a lot of people who've passed through the space and have now are um, members of the Open Assembly. So <clears throat> I think the, the most, for me, the most important thing to to emphasize here is this this notion of artistic practice uh, that Gigi raised. Um, for me, it's it's it's it's definitely it was definitely a space in order to rethink artistic practice. But it, 
for me, the most important part of it was how that was a social practice, um, primarily, uh, um, in the sense of how does how do we artfully uh, uh, practice the social. Um, <clears throat> so the occupation uh, became a condition of possibility in many ways for forms of life, for an experimentation of forms of life that, that is always, uh, of course, of forms of relationality. It's always, always a form of being with others. And in Athens in particular at this time, and this is very similar to what you were saying, uh, we were very alone. Um, and uh, this was what was really quite uh, radical about um, the space was that we found each other. It was, there was a, a, a profound feeling of finding each other and how um, a, a kind of a planning together. But it was always an ongoing experimentation and, and it was always informal. And I think this is something that was very important and something that it's hard to, to keep but this informality was really what was extremely ex uh, exciting, this common experimentation. This is not to suggest that um, every day, you know, on park benches and balconies and kitchens there isn't this planning uh, happening. But this is what I mean about finding each other uh, of all of these very different fields, different uh, peoples from different walks of life that may not have um, to being able to uh, discourse, to dialogue, to exchange ideas. We may brush and touch up in protests uh, and in public squares, um, but to actually have a space where we could really uh, get to, um, to talk to each other and share different um, practices. <clears throat> so the other thing that was interesting at the time was the collapse between the audience, mem the audience members and the people uh, who were uh, performing or creating uh, different works of art. Because, um, because there was so much emphasis on process, uh, for example, in this particular example that Gigi said about the own goal, where different artists, uh, from very established artists to students, uh, would present their work, uh, they would, at the end, the audience would be part of that work in process. So the, the, uh, somebody would uh, present their work and then they would have a discussion with the audience where the audience would actually become part of that creative process, which I found really exciting. Um, anyway, I could go on and on and, and, uh, about so many of the things, but uh, I think it's also very important to, to emphasize that it's a struggle. It's not easy. Um, uh, that the commons that we talk about a lot is not an easy thing. It's a, it's a constant struggle. And, um, and we're just hoping that uh, we Ambrose can remain open uh, so we can continue struggling and, and finding this way. Thank you. Um, let's go to the other side of the table um, where the um, second person on your right uh, is Erdan Gündüz. It's a dance and choreographer from Turkey and uh, he became uh, a very iconic and well known as the standing man from the Taksim place. Um, he did something which is um, actually nearly the opposite or, or one step before what you did. He went there completely alone in a moment where the only way you could appear there was being alone because uh, any public gathering was forbidden on Taksim Square in that moment and um, you just um, when I read it in one of the many interviews that were also published in German newspapers after uh, um, after this uh, night, um, you were like going there, not really knowing what to do, and arriving at the space at the square, deciding that you'll simply stand there with your body uh, in front of the Ataturk uh, image. Um, but let me, before you start to answer, uh, introduce also Tunçay Ashar, who is uh, next to. Uh, Erdem and he will translate from uh, Turkish into German, so who doesn't understand German has to use the headphones now. Okay, I will speak in Turkish. Kriz. Çin'de fırsat demek. Aynı zamanda. Um, das Wort Krise bedeutet auf Chinesisch auch uh, Möglichkeit, Opportunity. Uh, 
e, sistemin nefes aldığı bir şey olarak görebiliriz. Um, auf der künstlerischen Ebene bedeutet es für mich, dass, dass man Möglichkeiten eben erhält und dass Menschen in der Lage sind, auch diese Möglichkeiten zu nutzen, um der Gemeinschaft eine Art Atemerweiterung zu ermöglichen. Buradaki asıl olay hani insan ya da insanlık kavramlarından çok insanın kendisi. Um, yani. was, was, was wichtig ist in diesem Punkt ist uh, mehr als der Mensch. Uh, es ist wichtig die Begriffe uh, Menschen im Begriff Menschlichkeit in den Vordergrund zu bringen. Uh, deminden işte sosyal yaşantı da, da bu pratik wir haben gerade darüber geredet, wie die, der Aktivismus umgesetzt wurde. Um, Picasso sagt, dass uh, Kunst eigentlich eine Art Lüge ist, uh, Lüge sei, um, uh, die, die Kunst uh, würde das aussprechen, was die Menschen gerne hören bzw. sehen wollen. Wenn ich mich an dieser, an dieser Stelle selber kritisieren darf, glaube ich, dass das Standing Man, die Standing Man Performance am Taxim Square nicht sehr viel bewirkt hat. Aber es hat vielen Menschen die Möglichkeit gegeben, die Art von Hoffnung zu spüren, die ich in dem Moment gespürt habe. An dieser Stelle ist es wichtig, die Gesetze gut zu kennen und in der Folge die Kunst auch dementsprechend auszuführen. Um, Yeni düşünceler, yeni bakış açıları. Çünkü Amerika, Amerika'yı yeniden keşfetmeye gerek yok. Um, wir brauchen neue Gedanken, neue Visionen uh, und neue Träume, aber um, man muss Amerika nicht noch einmal entdecken. Um, okay, başka bir konuya geçeceğim. Örneğin milestone yani kilometre taşı dediğimiz yapılardaki en önemli nokta. Milestone. Milestone. Yani kilometre taşı dan bahsedeceğim biraz daha. Mm-hmm. Uh, er möchte gerne ein, uh, ein neues Thema hier aufmachen an der Stelle und zwar will er über uh, den Meilenstein reden. Uh, mesela el yapımı tuğlalar bu kilometre taşı dediğimiz Handgemachte, ähm, handgemachte ähm, Bausteine äh, können die Milestones ersetzen, also den Meilenstein ersetzen. Damit kann man sogar äh, in einer kollektiven Form äh, große Gebäude neu erschaffen. An dieser Stelle ist es wichtig zu erwähnen, dass es um das kollektive gemeinsame Schaffen geht. Und 
Ähm, alles, was wir dazu brauchen, sämtliche Elemente liegen äh, schon vor. Äh, man muss sie nur benutzen, um daraus eben Bausteine zu machen, handgemachte, selbst kreierte. Und das Gebäude bedeutet in diesem Fall die Kunst. Und äh, ich sehe die Kunst als die einzige Möglichkeit, den einzigen Weg, Dinge miteinander zu teilen. <lacht> Und äh, daraus resultiert, äh, resultieren auch solche Begriffe wie Life Art ähm, und Artivism, äh, über die wir ja hier gerade auch reden. Ähm, er würde gerne an dieser Stelle jetzt seinen Beitrag erstmal beenden, um dann später eben nochmal einzusteigen. Ich habe noch eine kurze Frage, ähm, weil ähm, du auch mit, äh, über die Kritik an deiner eigenen Performance geredet hast und, und in diesem Moment, ähm, in dem du dich dahin stellst. Ich wüsste gerne, äh, äh, hast du denn damit gerechnet, dass sich andere Menschen dazustellen? Also ähm, dieser Moment, der ist ja doch, finde ich, der absolut transformatorische äh, und äh, ja, äh, ich finde doch schon auch bedeutende von dem, was du da performt hast. Uh, yes, but it was past. Ähm, er kann die Frage gar nicht so richtig beantworten gerade, so merke ich das zumindest, weil er sagt, es ist schon längst vorbei, es ist, ähm, die Inhalte in der Türkei äh, entwickeln sich sehr, sehr schnell und rapide. Das Thema ist schon längst an ihm vorbeigezogen. Ja, also ich finde trotzdem, dass wir darüber, ähm, was da passiert ist, nämlich sozusagen von dem Einzelnen zu einem Kollektiv zu kommen oder zu einem, äh, einem Verhalten ähm, und, und sich vielleicht auch ähm, äh, zu finden in äh, einem Kollektiv oder einem Multitudenorganismus, ähm, dass das, äh, das ist ein zentrales Thema, also über das wir hier reden und ähm, leite damit jetzt elegant über zu Martin äh, Gulasch. Äh, in dem er hat auch eben schon gesprochen, äh, hier äh, im Auditorium äh, über Greta Kör und äh, die Situation in Ungarn. Äh, Greta Kör ist eine äh, Gruppe, äh, wie eben schon... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I was talking... Yeah. Ah, I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you for the translation. Um, well, you got it all, no? it was translated also in, into English. Um, Well, Kretakur is a group that um, I, I knew actually as a, a, a kind of theater group, as we also have them in Germany, like they do modern versions of uh, classical plays, and they were very, very famous. Um, Arpad was, I think, the most famous director in Hungary, and then at a, at when he was so famous, he simply stopped it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, went to the villages, went to the people, went to a collective, participative situation and started to create in very different ranges of performing and visual arts, of film making, of music theater making, of gatherings, uh, um, experiments of, um, yeah, I, I would call it experiments of, of, of social collectives, of uh, multitudes, of, um, uh, yeah, the, um, in a good sense of the word popular uh, formats and uh, innovations. Um, you have talked a little bit about this before, but you uh, uh, just uh, mentioned it uh, in a very um, um, short way, also confronted with the situation in Hungary, which um, um, gives you, um, makes your working day um, mainly, um, um, which occupies your working day mainly uh, with the political uh, and social situation of artists and population in Hungary and um, takes a little bit away the focus on this kind of work. But it is, um, in my opinion, when I also listened to uh, your politicians uh, talking on, on the video screen here to us, 
it is somehow, uh, and I think in a very um, um, überzeugende Art und Weise, in a very convincing way, um, um, something they are like uh, asking the artist, the Hungarian artist now to do, like go to the countryside and uh, uh, invite art from the countryside instead of uh, showing all these avant-garde crap. Uh, uh, uh, that you do. Maybe, Martin, you could t uh, tell us a little bit about this experience of Critical. About our avant garde crap or about what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think about the, how the avant garde crap and the countryside got together. Um, yes. Probably, uh, I guess the most important question about this change of Critical was that why we left the theater uh, venues and and, and venues like this uh, in 2009, and why did we choose to play performances in other different um, uh, venues and for different uh, audiences? The main reason was that, uh, for example, this situation that you are sitting in the dark and we are in the light, and there's there's there's there's you know this is the distance between the audience and the and the, and the performance. And and we were we were not me but Arpad, who's a, has a professional career since I don't know. Uh, 95. He, he was very, very full uh, with this shit, and, and he said that uh, it could not continue anymore because it is not the way of, of contemporary theater for him. Uh, and I was, I was, I was, I don't know. I just after my my high school um, uh, degree, and I was very, very satisfied. I was very, very, uh, you know, um, interested about the, this way of theater to go out to the countryside, like in the beginning of the 20th century in Russia or I don't know in Germany, and to play for the village people, for the Roma communities, and play with the children and get together. And of course, I'm talking about a bit cynical because everybody's talking about very cynical uh, on. Critical's new stuff because for the theater professionals it's not theater anymore. For the social uh, workers or like the or the professionals in the, in the in the social care it is not uh, I don't know social work. Uh, for teachers it is not an educational work. So we are in the middle of of, of no man's land and we are trying to find our I don't know definition of of, of, of art in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in something. In, in, a, in a completely new way, and of course, it has it has a tradition even in Hungary to to make theater like this, but but because it was never ever accepted by by the state and never ever accepted by you know the institutions of art, it is very hard to put your uh, efforts in the middle of this debate and say that yes, this is also theater and it has also. Uh, I don't know the the, the the the same quality of aesthetical quality. I mean, uh, as it was before with Siegel and Chekhov plays and Shakespeare plays and and stuff like that. And please just um, try to change a bit your focus, and you will find something new, which could be also relevant if you if if if, if our work was relevant to you before. Uh, and this is this is how we are working now. So. Um, I don't say that we are spending all of our time in the countryside because right as I mean here and, and, and we also playing uh, performances in normal venues but we, we, we changed the prof our profile and we changed the main focus and we are saying that uh, uh, as much as we have to play uh, for big audiences that as much we have to play in schools and in I don't know uh, community centers in the, in, the, in, the, in the countryside because these are also uh, very important places of the public and uh, because nobody else is dealing with these spaces so they are almost empty since the since the since the changing of the of the of the of the of the form of the state uh, they are as I said. Um, Practically empty, so we have to we have to we have to try to reinvent these places and try to to re uh, put put our energies into these these communities because they are also in the in the desperate need of of of, of, of living art and and and and the desperate need to to meet with people and of course of course these people are not those uh, those people we are we met in I don't know theaters in the in the capital or in in, in, in other uh, places but these are absolutely interesting um, you know meetings 
And it, but it's very interesting that our actors who are who are with us in this journey since I don't know three years and who had to adapt their skills to to an absolutely different way of communication within the theatrical forms. Um, they have to ask questions. They have to react on I don't know the the reactions of the audience. They have to I don't know stop the place once or, and continue another way. So they have to be very lively together with the audience. Uh, it, it increased their their their their quality of performance on an absolutely unbelievable way. And and those who are able to play in front of teenagers. 10 a.m. in the morning and could attract their attention, they will be better at 6, 7 p.m. on the stage and together the, the, the, the, the attention of the audience. So I guess it, it, it, could, be, it could be also interesting for other, other, other professionals within the theater, not just in Hungary. Adam said the crisis is opportunity uh, in a Chinese tradition. Um, one of the projects which also um, um, was uh, widely also even I think a part of in Munich um, um, seen and uh, um, um, shared experiences uh, in Hungary and uh, uh, abroad was called the crisis trilogy um, that you made and um, I, I think in my opinion uh, the, the parts I, su I saw at least it was a, a, a fantastic uh, symbiosis of, uh, of, of putting together what is an artist himself in crisis as you described uh, Arpad's uh, situation in a certain moment a theater in crisis in the look for uh, other uh, uh, backgrounds form its context and a society or a system in crisis um, uh, Maybe we, we um, uh, as you already uh, introduced a little bit about this before, um, um, the way you worked with different communities and very, very different art formats, uh, that is something that also led you to this human platform you were presenting here in this afternoon, something that also tries to unite now artists and other people from other parts of society trying to um, state their crisis uh, and the crisis of uh, their country, their state, their uh, economic system together? It is a desire. So, of course, we are, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I was introduced by a, like a superhero or I don't know, a critical is try to solve all the problems. Um, at the beginning of the morning, they are playing to children, and after they are going to retirement communities, and after to, to solving economical problems. No, of course not, but, but, but uh, my experience is that, that theater professionals has the ability, as I referred in my lecture, to, to, to, to make narratives and, and to put together different parts of the society and, and give a narrative to them that this is your story. And probably you didn't realize it till now, but, but it, it is. And, and if, you, if you accept it, and if you think that yes, this story explains my story as well, uh, then you could put your part into the common part and, and, and probably could achieve a better common ground for, for all of our desires. So uh, I guess this is, the, this, is the, this is a very interesting way for us in Creta to, to, to, to give narratives to these movements and give dramaturgy to these actions. So not just single actions here and the single action, action there, because of course it has, it has the sexiness, it has the, I don't know, good PR, it could be on the news at night and tomorrow in the newspapers. But the point is that how could you attract the, the, the attention of the audience, not just for one action, but by action, by action, by action, by action, and to achieve a better, I don't know, uh, position to tell your story in a longer narrative, not just in, a, in, in one single point that we are fighting for, I don't know, against um, against the empty houses and want all the homeless people to have a house. And of course, it's a very, it's a very uh, complex story because if you if you are putting your fingers in a story like this, you have to deal with the poverty, you have to deal with the municipality, the the, the political uh, relevance of the of the of the MPs within the municipality and and stuff like that. So you have to you have to you have to build up a. a, a um, a much more complex concept with, with several actions, and if you put several actions, it, it, it, it, it is the part when the, theater, when the responsibility or the ability of the theater professionals came in, come in because because because as I mentioned, we could build up the narrative, and and and this is how you could get the attention on a better level from the from the society to your actions. 
Thank you, Martin. Um, Manfred Bösi is here from the Munich uh, section of the Instituto Cervantes. Um, um, if it's not... Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It does. Yes, it does. Yes. Um, um, uh, he will t tell us a little bit about uh, uh, the, the situation or similar situations in Spain. Uh, I'm very happy that he's also part of this table. He's, uh, as me, not an artist, but um, um, I think that uh, especially the cultural institutes here in Europe, um, they contribute a lot um, in sharing these different experiences. Um, that is not that doesn't would not have to be necessarily so. I mean, they are governmental finance institutions. Um, um, but um, I presence this with uh, not only Instituto Cervantes, also with Goethe Institute or uh, other uh, um, um, representations of cultural uh, exchange in these countries. So, um, Manfred, please tell us a little bit about Spain. Yes, thanks. Well, I'm very happy that, uh, that I or that you were invited here to participate. I feel a little bit odd, I have to say, because everybody's an activist, and we have the Spanish activists and uh, actors uh, and theatre um, playwrights and everybody here. So. What I was asked to do was to uh, present to you guys um, um, s some overview of the situation in Spain. That's exactly, I think, what you what you th uh, think um, somebody from the Instituto Cervantes could do as to put in a postcard or a dialogue uh, from Spain. And uh, I found the best way to do that was in writing, so not to bore you with uh, lots of S and O's in my speech. Um, in looking for my material, I found uh, surprisingly and repeatedly in uh, the articles and uh, the research, I had to do um, a citation from Heiner Müller, with which I would like to start. So Heiner Müller's response to the outcry of the theater crisis was, theater is crisis, this is really the definition of theater. I can only and exclusively work as crisis, or it can only exclusively work as, as crisis and in crisis. On the contrary, it wouldn't have any relation to society outside of theatre. With effect from the 1st of September 2012, the Spanish cultural industry, too, suffered a drastic increase in the value of added tax, which went up from 8 to 21%. With this, the admission fee for the theatres rose accordingly. The effect of this fiscal measure was devastating and felt almost immediately by theatres, film theatres and artists alike. According to the Feder Federación Estatal de Asociaciones de Empresas de Teatro y Danza, a state federation society of theatre and dance and dance companies, the net revenues fell by 33%. In 31%, fewer seats were sold in comparison with the previous year. With the consequent effects in job losses, decreased social contribution and loss of earnings on copyright, etc. The truth is, said Alberto Fernández Torres from the University from Complutense in Madrid, he said, La verdad es que era de esperar un drama, pero no una tragedia. The truth is, we were ex expecting a drama, but not a tragedy. He went on to say that the introduction of the 21% VAT rate was unjust, damaging, irrational, and antisocial measure, which provoked to be literally inefficient and counterproductive on tax revenues. The state took in 6 million euros on VAT, but lost 9 million euros in earnings on um, corporate income tax. And Addition, in addition, increased costs he had to do in paying of unemployment benefits. So it was really devastating. The film theatres did manage to hold on to good level of sales until recently, but lost audience in income and income accordingly. The most shattering <coughs> consequences were suffered by the dance companies that saw more than 50% of their production disappear in comparison to the former years. What this might mean for the Spanish economy overall can be guessed in taking into account that the Spanish cultural industry makes up 4% of the gross domestic product in Spain. Nevertheless, with this sad panorama, we will have to differentiate, and differentiate between different types of theatrical, theatrical spaces, theatrical formats and market types. Firstly, the commercial theater has been hit by the crisis like any other company but suffered the additional effect on drastic reduction in city, provincial, and state subsidies for theaters. Depending also on tours, they saw their revenues fall equally reduced. 
public funded theaters and performance spaces were likely the most hit not only by the crisis but also by the direct drastic cuts on public funding everywhere and at the state, province and city level in Spain. The workforce in the state funded theaters was often criticized for the lack of professionalism which further endangered the theaters. The state funded theaters achieved generally a self financing percentage of about 40% relying on at least 60% state funding and this is a good ratio. This kind of state funding did not always materialize, for whatever reason. Then there are production and performance spaces and houses like, for example, the Casa Encendida in Madrid, with a mixed finance concept of private-public partnership. These kind of places, in the last decade at least, entered more and more into the off-theater scene and now feel the effect of the crisis from both sides, the public and the private sector. Or to give another example of a different cultural branch, the Circulo de Bellas Artes, an important culture house in the center of Madrid, edited about 24, 25 catalogs a year on their exhibi exhibitions in the years before the crisis. Now they are about four, six, or seven. But lots of cultural houses in the urban district and even in the suburbs manage to hold on to the most fundamental cultural infrastructure. According to my research, the artists less, least affected by the crisis were those who never profited from any kind of state or private funding anyway. Mostly young, internationally working artists and also internet savvy. This is one way people got um, work as artists, so they, they could uh, connect with the, uh, with the international society. Another possible solution of the problem can be found in places like Cordoba, where groups like uh, Vertebro Teatro turned to micro mecenasco and crowdfunding. But, and this is a very interesting but, we find in all these depressing news different voices, those who have been working or thinking independently, outposts on the search of new authors, artists, and theater performers like Sala Quadrapare, La Casa de la Portera, Lumière, Cubic Fabric, Sala Tu, Teatro del Arte in Madrid, or in Barcelona, Attic Mentidos, Atrium, Porta Quadro. These places started out on a format that was passed on to them by the off-off-Broadway of the 50 experience, 50s experience by Latin America, and especially by Buenos Aires, where during their time of the dictatorial regime in the 80s, Argentine intellectuals and artists copied the New York models with small and very small theater spaces and took this idea with them when they emigrated to Spain. It had a big impact on the Spanish creative elites, who were then still much orientated towards, for example, a declamatory style of the old Franco times. The porteño uh, from Buenos Aires, Claudio Tolcachir, turned his home into a stage called Timbre Cuatro. José Martet emulated the experiment, and the increase in that to 21% was the perfect storm that turned the Spanish theater world upside down. Microtheater was born, often founded on the basis of cultural association and with new. Am I talking too long? <laughs> Shall we try another? So, microtheater was born, often founded on the base of cultural association and with new and innovative concept and plays. It's a sort of teatro subcutaneo, under skin theater. And we can already say that this off of Espanol, um, ha llegado para quedarse, has arrived and will stay. Madrid has often been considered as a breeding ground for innovative theatre formats. More than 10,000 people went to the 25-seater La Casa de la Portera, which offers this kind of new formats. For example, plays 15 minutes long for 4 euros. Theatre and series like the television telenovela. La Casa de la Portera received about 150 proposals of plays a month by anybody who would like to become involved. The real boom of the small scale theatre. Some are reminded of the 68ers. Cuando el Parlamento se convierte en teatro, el teatro ha de ser un Parlamento. When Parliament turns to theatre, theatre has to turn into Parliament. Javier Yage, co-founder of the Sala Cuadra Pared, says now, 
When there is no political guidance in sight, a breakaway of theatrical infrastructure is the time for new talents with all kinds of freedom available. He insists that there has been an evolution, but now accelerated by the crisis. He thinks that the public theater will have to redefine its place in society, but that the alternative space, independent of any kind of touring, are the place for new generations of authors, actors, and directors alike. In terms of genre changes, due to the current times, people like José Sánchez Sinistera, Javier Huerta Calvo, or Ignacio García May engage in a qualitative diagnosis and, pen, in, and paint a thoroughly positive picture. They detect a metamorphosis in production formats, in playwrights and new ways of searching out audiences. The current panorama of playwrights, they say, is as vivid and varied as never. And the most interesting change can be seen in the return of the text and the author. The latest development was reached when the Ministry of Culture announced an increase in state subsidies for theatre of a total of 54% for 2014, whereas other cultural realms will have to suffer more cuts, like film, libraries and archives. But this will not change the above-mentioned new theatrical formats at all. I am an optimist, José Sánchez Sinistera says. Se están inventando fórmulas para esa pervivencia del teatro que van a generar en los alrededores del sistema teatral acontecimientos muy interesantes. We see the creation of new theatrical formats in favor of the survival of the theater on the edges of the theater system that will bring about very interesting developments. And Javier Yague declares, En esos últimos años ha habido una eclosión de nuevos dramaturgos. During the last years, we have seen a real flourishing of new playwrights. This idea is that the theatre should regain its function of the agora, where people debate and meet far beyond the mere commercial world. But this very dream seems to be endangered by, cur by current political action, as with the increase in that to 21%. So culture is now being treated as any other commercial product and has lost its privileged position, whereby it was taxed at a lower rate. Then, culture was more seen as a commercial product, but as a, not seen as a commercial product, but as a benefit to society. In the face of general economic difficulties and high admission charges, the Spanish citizen may decide rather to stay at home, preferring the television screen to the theater stage. And this, I think, is the most worrying aspect for society as a whole. Thank you for your attention. Muchas gracias. What's up, Thank you very much, Rick. Um, I, I would just uh, continue asking you and also in, in continuing the others here on, uh, on, on, the, on the panel. Um, now that we're all sitting here together and listening to different strategies uh, and activities um, in different parts of, of Europe, um, one question which uh, you mentioned also when we talked before um, is... Uh, um, and that brings us also back to what we have discussed the whole last uh, two days, uh, starting with Christian Felber uh, um, uh, demanding a, another uh, vision and alternative for a development of a European Union or of a, a gathering um, of, of the countries of this continent. Um, whether these kind of activities that uh, manage to bring in our micro uh, systems um, um, um, so many surprising um, uh, uh, groups of people, uh, gatherings that uh, we wouldn't have thought about before when we were trying to plan to program a, a, a cultural institution, a theater or a theater group. Um, is there any, any chance for uh, a European uh, Union of culture, of cultural identities, of uh, um, something that uh, gives relevance um, uh, to this uh, community uh, besides or much uh, uh, uh, above or, or, or much much bigger or, or, or than, than a monetary union? Yes, perhaps you okay. Um, well, I would hope so. I would hope so, even though the, the uh, European Union often, of the culture is the fifth wheel, as you say. You know? the, uh, but I think uh, Europe is a really very interesting uh, place for cultural dialogues for thousands of years now, and we have all the chances to make the best of it. We have heard from Teatro del Valle um, that you guys occupy a public space, 
like in Athens too, and uh, um, Adam did this too. Here we have a sort of um, con the conquest of another space, like people turning their home into um, theater spaces, um, keeping in mind and keeping um, the, uh, uh, uh, getting the audience involved and the response of the people in Madrid or in Barcelona or in other cities in Spain is really surprisingly positive and people like it. One might uh, criticize, I don't know, certain kinds of theatr uh, theatrical formats like um, using telenovela style in order to make new plays, it could be. Um, but on the other hand, you get people there very close to the, to the, uh, to the performer, to the playwright, and um, you, you hit them, so to say, in, in, in your living room or in their living room. And this is, this is very interesting. I think that uh, the best we can do uh, in, in Europe is, on all kinds of level, keep the theater as um, a communicating place for the experiment of democracy and of that what we want. Um, and I think that's, that's the real challenge. Uh, Europe started out like that in Greece, so we have to keep the project going. Um, yes, I think um, this is maybe also something that in a way can begin to answer a very open, complex question such as the third question you posed to us when you began your introduction what, what is left over of, of us as artists when we engage in, in this process? Well, we actually, the, uh, this agora, this um, uh, conquering again or rediscovering, whatever it is, a, a ritual in which the relationship with the audience uh, it's, is much less, less conventional than it would be in a protected uh, sort of a space such as uh, well, uh, traditional production. Uh, well, it's very nourishing for us as artists. And maybe it gives us back something or it puts us in the right position to deal with our um, uh, artistic questions as well and, and with our, um, in a way, with our social role, could, could we say that, if, or is it too orthodox? I don't know, but anyway, something that deals with this, with the way, uh, uh, well, we uh, relate our work with, with, with, um, uh, with something very primary, very, very basic, that in a way has built our, our society, as, as you say, and um, and I think this gives us back a lot and a lot to think about for our work as artists. And, and it makes it difficult in a way, when, when we talk about crisis, I think it's interesting to think about that. It makes it difficult to simply conceive your job as, well, I, I go back, as, as, as you were saying when you spoke, well, I, you know, I go back to my little or big space with my nice and clean product and my, my lovely audience, um, maybe not so crowded, but it doesn't matter, comes to see it and then gives me a nice feedback. It's difficult to go back to that after this turmoil and, uh, and probably, I don't know, it's something we will continue dealing with in, in the future, I hope. Metinlerle e, bir hesap yapmaya oturacak düzeye gelme gerekebilir. To deal with governments. Es kann sein, dass wir in der, in diese, leicht in die Situation kommen und uns darauf vorbereiten müssen, dass wir in Verhandlungen treten müssen mit Staatsoberhäuptern und Staatskonstrukten an sich. Ah. Örneğin Türkiye'de bireysel olarak kültür bakanlığına başvuramıyorsun. Zum Beispiel in der Türkei kann man äh, als einzelner Künstler sich nicht äh, für eine Förderung, äh, eine Förderung beantragen äh, beim Kultusministerium. Äh, ama ben de son yaptığım işte bu iş kültür bakanlığından destek almamaktadır demek değil. 
Und mit der letzten Arbeit, die ich gemacht habe, wollte ich eigentlich auch sagen, auch die, die, die Message äh, rüberbringen, dass diese Arbeit nicht gefördert wurde vom Kultusministerium. Und jedes Mal, wenn ich das sage, während der Performance, ähm, äh, provoziere ich jemanden. Und äh, vielleicht werden sie da durch, diesen, durch diese Performance dazu gezwungen werden, in der nächsten oder in der übernächsten Arbeit von mir mich zu fördern. Vielleicht äh, ist die Art der Arbeit, wie sie äh, Mato in, äh, in, in Ungarn oder wie sie eben anders zum Beispiel in Rumänien stattfindet, äh, vielleicht muss man diese Art von Arbeit gut verfolgen um eine gemeinsame Sprache zu entwickeln, um eine gemeinsame Plattform zu entwickeln, auf der man auch eine gemeinsame Methode dann findet und entwickeln kann. Uh, independent, ja, yani bağımsız olmaktan bahsediyoruz ve bu belki uh, şu an en çok tartışılan şeylerden biri bence. Medya paraya bağlı, diyenler paraya bağlı. Ein wichtiger Begriff in diesem Zusammenhang ist der Begriff der Unabhängigkeit, denn die Medien sind nicht unabhängig, sie sind abhängig vom Geld. Die Kunstausstellungen, die großen Kunstformate, Biennalen sind abhängig vom Geld. Und ich finde, dass äh, die Kunst auf jeden Fall ihre Unabhängigkeit und auch die, äh, die, die äh, konträre Haltung bewahren muss. Ich habe das Thema Geld angeschnitten, weil ich auf die Frage hinaus will, wer bestimmt, wer entscheidet und wer bewertet äh, die künstlerischen Handlungen. Äh, und äh, es geht da um eine Machtfrage und äh, deswegen komme ich auch auf das Thema Geld. Bazı protestoları, işte non yani şiddetsiz protestoları destekliyor ya da e, işte sağlık için olan, sosyal haklar için olan şeyleri aslında kitleler başka bir şekilde, kitleler destekliyorlar yani yapılan protestoları. Um, die, denn die große Masse äh, unterstützt, äh, so, so ist meine Erfahrung, äh, die, die gewaltlos, den gewaltlosen Protest, wenn es um äh, Themen geht wie soziale Gerechtigkeit oder das Gesundheitssystem und andere gesellschaftlichen, rele, gesellschaftlich relevanten Themen. Sie könnten auch genauso gut bevorzugen, einfach nur vor dem Fernseher zu sitzen. Das könnte niemand negativ beurteilen. Jedoch werden wir als Künstler immer fortfahren, von Neuem zu produzieren und unsere Kreativität auch immer wieder neu zu finden. Vielleicht werden wir die, die, die, diese politische Situation, in der wir uns gerade finden, auf jeder für sich auf seine Art und Weise auf die Bühnen tragen. Ja, ja, zum Beispiel, wie ich das gemacht habe mit meiner Standing Man Performance. Und ich sehe das schon als eine, eine, eine Performance gegen die Regierung.
Um, perhaps uh, we, we have like 20 minutes left for uh, this panel. Um, this is the moment where we would like to invite you very much to contribute as well to what has been commented here on stage, to ask questions or to give your positions, your points of view. Um, we have a microphone over there, so please indicate if you would like to say something. Dallas, microphone is not working yet. You want mine? It's not working. Take mine. Uh, I'm coming from Turkey. I, I don't have a question uh, actually, but I'd like to add something about this uh, standing man performance. Uh, actually, where uh, the standing man stood was uh, in front of the opera house. Maybe uh, this should be pinpointed. So, <coughs> uh, actually, the opera house in Turkey, uh, in Istanbul, was the only opera house, and for a long time, artists have uh, struggled to make government uh, allow people perform there, but the government doesn't, uh, doesn't allow people, and it's evacuated, and they say there's a construction, but nothing happens, it's completely empty. Uh, so, what I have seen in this uh, standing man performance was not only uh, standing, you know, in front of the portrait of Atatürk, but also in front of a place occupied by the government, and... Uh, for nothing, actually. Uh, it's empty, it's not being used, and which means uh, people cannot perform any kind of arts there. And uh, it is very close to Gezi Park, so, uh, and the Gezi Park will be demolished. So I think uh, this Standing Man performance, maybe in other countries we had the same thing. It's not to be discussed on just one level. Uh, occupation is not just on one level. It may have a political side, it may have uh, a performative side, but it's not just one level. Some people in Turkey think, you know, uh, Erdem Bündüz was just standing in front of Atatürk's portrait, but it was not only some political uh, side taking, it was more than that. That building was uh, the symbol of government's banning, stopping people from performing arts. So maybe he sort of uh, claimed it back, claimed the space back. Uh, and for one person, I think it could be considered as a step of uh, leading to occupation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, may I talk? Um, the situation is different. In European countries, the people are occupied the buildings or some places, but in Turkey, the government uh, occupied the art centers or theatrical places. How is it going? Okay, we are already Eastern and we are thinking differently. Uh, yeah, completely different. Yes. Yes, it, it's like uh, it's, it's like the same as some uh, institutional theaters in Italy. <coughs> but, uh, I, I think that mm, some some theaters we we we see uh, a, a, this paradox of a pri privatization made by public institutions because uh, the uh, for example we we have, we, we have uh, um, uh, artistic director that uh, stays on his uh, chair for 25 years and or um, or, or artist or, or, a, or a director that uh, spends the, the public money of the public theater in a programmation but of 50% uh, of the programmation is made by three shows of his own direction so uh, this, this is another paradox by pri privatization by made by public. Yeah. Yes. 
just to add something, well, it's, that actually reflects very much a moment in time where we are, where actually the whole public sector becomes private. So, in some ways, it's, you know, it's, it's where we are. More questions? Remarks? Comments? Uh, something I am asking myself, we, um, often we talk about uh, the terms of artivism, what Martin was saying before about um, people criticizing it, it's not real social work, but it's not real art. And often we have this question, okay, now you occupy the theater, except of occupying a space, what else new is becoming there? Because you could also occupy a building, any building, um, and it is also something which was done in the 80s all the time, so the, the question is, what is the added value uh, in creating a space which has this um, yeah, aesthetic dimension, theatrical dimension, performative dimension, and what do you maybe produce more than an occupied building? And uh, this is, um, and does either good social work or either good art comes out of it? And um, often I think um, you see that, yeah, maybe often you can say neither or, or nor, but I want to share the experience of a Bros theatre and I want to ask why actually, I, I'm not sure why this, what I see in a Bros was produced. Because in a Bros theatre, every time I go there, um, I have the impression I like every, th every performance I see there. Um, every day is something else, or in the morning there is something, and in the evening there is something. Um, I have the impression that my own colleagues do other things in Ambrose Theatre than they did before in their normal work. I don't know why. I, uh, I saw colleagues that did very classical theatre doing something with, an S with SMSs they found in a mobile phone on the street, what they would never do in their normal work, but in this, uh, uh, in Ambrose Theatre, it became completely interesting what they were doing, and I saw um, theor theorists, because in Ambrose Theatre, it is meanwhile a big honor to be in Ambrose Theatre. I put a, I did a lecture there, and it was full, and the questions I had were the most challenging questions, the most challenging public I had in there. And I saw also other theoreticians that might be, um, that were also very much challenged by the public of Ambrose. Uh, and I think it is, might be the same public than in another theatre, but in Ambrose, for some reason, the discussions got much more interesting. And um, yes, I am not sure why, but I want to say that there might be a connection between um, the quality of art and this kind of spaces. At least this is my experience uh, in Ambrose Theatre, and if we find what this might be, this might, uh, might be an interesting point where you see that a uh, precarious situation like this actually may be produced, like Marta said, more interesting art. I'm not sure. I mean, your comment was really nice, so I just, you know, I would like to add something into that. Um, uh, I just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, one thing that came to me while you were talking and, and actually connected things we were talking before, um, and kind of the, the ideas of the private, uh, kind of the, the home theater and so on. Uh, I kind of, I was kind of thinking in the problematization of public and private, uh, that those questions are not new in the theater and performance practice. In the last 20 years, there is a lot of, you know, like this course around the artistic agency, what's the role of the artist, if we are just, you know, we take all sorts of different roles and, and like art kind of goes to other spaces and challenges the limits between what's intimate, what's personal, and so on. But I think that we are in a totally different moment right now, and I think that's why it's kind of interesting those kind of occupied theaters and somehow how they happen in, in Italy, there are so many now. Uh, that perhaps it's a moment that, that we're actually already implicated, so it's not a choice of just doing that out of, you know, position yourself in relation to theater practice, but you're actually implicated and those spaces perhaps become other kind of spaces in the city. So 
might link with what you said. You know, it's a kind of space that resists categorization somehow and is not like in the normal channels. So yes, it's not the institutional space which has certain kind of expectations of the artist, and then perhaps the artist in the space can produce something else. And of course, those things you know are always interrelated. So what is produced, then <laughs> it's like a domino thing and produce something else. And that's why my experience of Ambrose was that it was actually something that was totally beyond all organizers and anyone involved or something that it was actually produced by all participants there. So somehow it was so much beyond going on and on and on. And it was beyond us and whatever. And you and you and Quervo was doing something there. It was something that everyone was helping creating and was going on. Um, you know, with, with, when we hear Occupy and we, we kind of get excited about it, but I think it's important to, to really emphasize that this lack of infrastructure, right, in, in, in the Greek uh, art, artistic scene, and one that probably hampers probably this kind of trans-European uh, um, cross-cultural thing that we were talking about before, but we are finding ways. We are all here, after all, and, and, uh, and there are um, um, ways. Um, but um, So this lack of infrastructure means very, something very simple, which is that you need space. And, and there are performances in homes as well, like we have examples of people opening their homes in Athens and showing performances, but you need, it's very simple, you need a space. Yeah? So you go and you occupy a space, and you, <coughs> it has been abandoned, and you take over. So it's a need and a making, a need and a make. Um, but also, because of that, you have a completely different relationship to the space. So you don't, either as a participant or even as an audience member, it's not about uh, these expectations that Gigi was talking about, it's not even about a consumption, and it's not about an entertainment, the way that you pay for a ticket and you go to the thing. So it becomes about labor, and it's not just about us who we give a lecture and then we're cleaning the toilet, literally five minutes later. It's not about the collective labor that happens uh, between all of the people who are passing through space, but it's also the labor of the social reproduction of life itself. This is what I think is so exciting, and this is what I think where theater and politics, of course, is as we know from ancient Greece, these two things, it's not a coin accident, this, these two things emerge at the same time. It, so when, you, when you're in a space and you are having to take over the means of production, not only of your aesthetic work, but also of the functional aspects of the, of the space, then collectively it becomes uh, this uh, moment of living labor um, producing life together. And I think this is why when you go to Ambrose, you have such a challenging uh, um, engagement, not only with the audience members, but everybody involved, because we are, we are aware of that, and so we're trying to push each other further. You know. So I, th this is my feeling. I was very interested by this uh, final part of the discussion in which uh, uh, there is an attempt to understand uh, why a theater and uh, why an occupation of a theater and not another place uh, might make things more interesting or more creative or whatever. And one possibility that I thought about uh, seeing at least the experience in Italy is that this is, seems to me that uh, the crisis that we are living in now, it's a moment in which we understand that there is no more possibility for partial critique. The critique of society has to be a total critique. And uh, in, o in other words, there is no way to improve things by changing small bits. Uh, there is a matter of the whole to be transformed and changed. And the moment, and, and total critique is something that happens in a large Transformation, such as you know, from medieval time to modernity. You know, that was a moment in which there was a total critique. There was some partial critique before, but then at some moment, conditions were such that modernity came out, and that was a completely different way to see the world and to see the reality. And that had been going on for you know three, four hundred years now, and and it seems to me that we are 
basically at the final point of that historical evolution, at least in the West. And, and, we are, and, and there are a lot of partial critiques out there. There are a lot of doctrines and ideas and theories that uh, t tackled pieces and bits of society to propose transformations, but there is no, not yet a complete thing. And the theater might be, you know, the place in which uh, uh, there is an experimentation of total critique. In other words, an occupied theater is a place in which there is a, an experimentation going on of how society could be. There is a, a positioning in the world of the possibilities that will happen right there, uh, as was said before by Hypatia. Uh, in part, is about you know reproducing the, the material life, but it's also about you know living a diff in a different way and producing a performance that kind of creates a narrative that is already beyond, is already in the other, in the other world that uh, eventually society will try to reach or, or, or will reach. So in, in, a, in a moment of crisis, it seems to me that there is a very important role for performance, and every transformation actually had in arts and in theaters and in, uh, in performance uh, uh, moments in which uh, you know, experimentation happened to begin with. So that can be an explanation. You, know, you have a theater, it's not just another space to be together. It's a space, you are there and then there is a stage and there is a something to do there, right? You, you are today there and you have a theater and therefore you better use it, you know, and perform and, and, and, and, and produce something out of it and, and, and, and open a new dialogue that describes the different world we are trying to, to build. That might be maybe a possibility, I don't know. We have time for one more question and then we have to close. <coughs> um, if there is no question, may I share my experience? I will translate. I need to translate. Um, Turkey's sanat konseyi var mı? Diye bir işim var ve bu işte. Uh, Bu iş için para lazım. Is there an art council in Turkey? Um, ich, äh, ich äh, arbeite gerade an einem Konzept, das heißt, is there an art council, also gibt es ein, äh, ein Kunstkonsortium in der Türkei und dafür äh, bin ich gerade dabei, Geld zu, Gelder zu suchen. <coughs> Sonra, äh, bi, bu işi kamusal alanda yapmak yapmaya karar verdim. Çünkü yani sokakta. Çünkü kira ödemeyecektim. E, afiş basmayacaktım. Flyer basmayacaktım. İnsanlara e, davet etmek için reklam yapmayacaktım. Um, Im Endeffekt habe ich mich dann dafür entschieden, diese Arbeit um, im öffentlichen Raum zu machen, also auf der Straße, denn um, um, ich brauche dafür keine Plakate, keine Flyer und keine große Promotion. Ähm, habe mein Publikum äh, dort, wo ich, wo ich performe. Und äh, keine Kosten für, für Raum, Strom, Techniker etc. Damit will ich sagen, dass ich, wenn ich meine Kunst ausüben will, auf jeden Fall immer einen Weg finden können muss, äh, um, sie, um, sie, um sie durchzuführen. Und was ich auf, dieser Straße, auf der Straße eben gesagt habe, ist, dass ich, äh, dass ich äh, vom Kultusministerium keine Förderung bekomme. Bu Nisan ayında yaptığım bir şeydi. Bu Nisan ayında yaptığım bir şeydi. Bu Nisan ayında Bu benim yaşadığım bir deneyim. Belki başkaları da e, bir takım şeyler illa ki şah dinlemesin. Das ist eine Erfahrung, die ich gemacht habe, mit der ich auch selber festgestellt habe, beziehungsweise meine Annahme 
verfestigen konnte, dass man bestimmte Voraussetzungen nicht unbedingt braucht, bestimmte Situationen nicht unbedingt erfüllt sein müssen, um äh, die, die, die, die, das Künstprojekt, das man im Kopf hat, durchzuführen. Und vor allem auch in der Auswahl der Thematik gehe ich davon aus, dass Themen, die man normalerweise vielleicht nicht unbedingt im politischen Kontext nutzen könnte oder mit dem politischen Kontext zusammenbringen, wie zum Beispiel Liebe, Tod, auch politisch gelesen werden können. Und während ich diese Arbeit, während ich in dieser Arbeit mein, mein persönliches Manifest zu Wort gebracht habe, habe ich auch diese Themeninhalte zur Sprache gebracht. Thank you very much to everyone. And um, yeah, good continuation.